Hello guys, welcome to today's lesson, Multiplying Fractions 2, which is a full-on lesson from our previous one. Today we're learning how to multiply fractions, specifically how to multiply two fractions, how to multiply improper fractions, and how to multiply mixed numbers. We'll be applying success criteria of multiplying fractions, two fractions together. Of course, we need to know our times tables and also know factors and how to do highest common factor so that it can assist with canceling out. But let's go through a few theory that we need to know. Now, Fractions do not need to have the same denominator to be multiplied together. To multiply fractions, we multiply the numerators together and we multiply the denominators together. For example, when we have a, multiply, a over b multiplied by c over d like that, we multiply the numerators together, we multiply the denominators together. Remember, we do not have to actually carry out the multiplication yet, because if possible, we simplify, divide, or cancel fractions before multiplying. Now, when you cancel our fractions, you do it vertically or diagonally. You cannot cancel horizontally. So for example, three over five multiplied by four over eight, as you can see, we can cancel vertically. Four into four will give you one, four into eight will give you two. Canceling diagonally is also allowed because the three will go into three, one go into the six, two. As we can see in that fraction, three over five times four over six. But you never can do this. Where you have three over five times six over seven, the three here cannot divide that three. You never cancel horizontally never do that right a whole number can be written as a fraction with a denominator of one we emphasized that in our previous lesson of means times also lots of and product all refer to the same mathematical operation mixed numbers have to be changed to improper fractions before multiplying. So please pick, take, take note of that. Mixed numbers, you change them to improper fractions before multiplying. Your final answer should always be in the simplest form. So these are some key ideas that you need to ponder over as we proceed with today's lesson. Let's take a very simple example. And of course, let's remember our times tables and also use factors and highest common factor to assist with simplifying our calculations. So if we look at three over four of four over five, the of simply means multiply. So you have three over four multiplied by four over five. Now at this stage, as you know, the four divides the four gives you one and divides that and gives you one. So what you have is you've got three times one for the numerator and we have one times five for the denominator. And of course, three times one is three and one times five is five. So three over five. Let's go to the next slide. 
Calculate the following by multiplying the numerators, then multiplying the denominators. Simplify your answer if possible. Right. So for question A, we have a third times half. So the numerators will be 1 times 1, and the denominators will be 3 times 2. Since nothing to be simplified, we carry out 1 times 1, that gives us 1, and 3 times 2, that gives us 6, so 1 over 6. For the second example, again, it will be 3 times 1 for the numerators and 5 times 4 for the denominators. Again, nothing to simplify. So 3 times 1, that gives us 3. And 5 times 4, that gives us 20. So 3 over 20. Next slide, please. Now we're going to multiply a mixed number by a mixed number. <clears throat> now, for mixed numbers, we have to change them first into improper fractions. Now, 6, 1 over 4. To change that to a mixed improper fraction, we've done this in a very beginning when we're adding fractions. So it will be 4 times 6 plus 1 and 4 all divided by 4. So 4 times 6 will give us 24 plus 1, 25 over 4. And for 2, 5 over 2, 2 over 5, that will be equal to, again, 5 times 2 plus 2 divided by 5. And so 5 times 2 will give you 10 plus 2. That gives you 12 over 5. So those are these two improper fractions here. So you have 25 over 4 multiplied by 12 over 5. Now, as you know, 5 goes there 5 and 5 goes there 1. 4 goes here 1 and 4 goes there 3. So the numerators, you've got 5 times 3 and for the denominators you got 1 times 1 and 5 times 3 gives you 15 and 1 times 1 gives you 1 and 15 over 1 is simply 15 and that's how you solve this problem so when you have mixed numbers you first convert into improper fractions convert you need to convert mixed numbers. Let's convert mixed numbers to improper fractions. Improper fractions. Before you carry out your calculation, remember to simplify by using the HCF. To simplify. For example, 12 and 4, we could have used 2, but 2 is not the highest common factor. 4 is the highest common factor between 4 and 12, and that's why we use 4. All right, next slide. You can pause here and carry on these calculations in your math books and please show your working out. So you can pause here and do the work. Thank you very much. These are the answers to the questions on the previous slide. So again, you can pause here 
and mark your work. Thank you. These are additional questions that you need to do. Again, you can pause here and go through those questions. There are three separate questions and go through them and show your working out in your math books. Please, if you have any questions or difficulties, make your postings on Google Classroom and I'll respond to them. Thank you. These are the answers to the questions on the previous slide. Please make sure you mark your work. And that was slide seven. Mark your work. And if there are any questions, please post on Google Classroom. Thank you. Enrichment. Who are we? Using the clues provided, work out two fractions that are being discussed. We are two proper fractions. All together, we consist of four different digits. When added together, our answer will be a proper fraction. When multiplied together, you carry out some counseling. You carry out some counseling. The result of our product contains no new digits from our original four. Three of our digits are prime numbers, and the fourth is a cube number. What fractions are being discussed here? Well, first and foremost, they have to satisfy all these conditions that has been listed here. You can pause now and do it and then continue with the video. And if you have questions, kindly post them on Classroom, Google Classroom, and I'll respond. If you have done it, you can continue watching the video now. I'll give a few explanations here. First and foremost, it says three of the digits are prime and the fourth is a cube number. Well, from one to 10, you will notice that two, three, five, seven are primes. They are prime numbers. And from one to 10, one and eight are cube numbers. Right. Now, since the fractions being discussed here are two proper fractions. Proper fractions means that the numerator is smaller compared to the denominator. And they consist of four different digits. Three of them have to be prime and the fourth have to be a cube number. But we also do know that when we perform the multiplication, added means that, multiplied means that. When we perform the multiplication, we can carry out some counseling. We can carry out some counseling. So at this stage, we do know we have 
And looking at these numbers, you know that two and four can cancel. The rest you cannot. So we can arguably say that the first fraction will have a two in it divided by something and the second fraction has got something divided by eight so that when we multiply these two fractions we can cancel out does it make sense so for the cubes one is rejected and that is taken for the primes we know that two is definitely taken now three five and seven we need two of them but they have to be placed in such a way that when we add them together we still get a proper fraction and when we multiply the product should contain no new digits other than the original four that we have i leave you to work out all those kinds of combinations but you would agree with me that there are two distinct possibilities that you can have two over that and something over eight there are two distinct possibilities that you come across that will satisfy all these conditions and that is if the denominator here is seven and if the numerator here is three that's one possibility the second possibility is when the denominator here is still seven and the numerator here is five so you can either have the digits two three uh, two three seven two three seven two three seven and eight or you can have two five seven and eight two five seven and eight now while this looks possible while this looks possible you will need to check them out. So do what I'll ask you to do now is first do two over seven plus three over eight and see what result it gives you and do two over seven multiply by three over eight. Well, two over seven plus that, you need an LCM of 56. And if you did this well, you will get 37. You get 37 over 56. And if you multiply that out, you will get because this will cancel that you get three over 28 three over three over 28 right you can also use the second fraction and do similar things add them first do two over seven 
plus 5 over 8 and do 2 over 7 multiply by 5 over 8 and you see that in all cases you'll be able to satisfy these conditions all the other combinations will not help you to satisfy all these combinations right thank you very much and it's a wrap for today good luck any questions post them on google classroom thanks bye